Hi, welcome to Tech at Work Online. I'm Allison Lamagna, Director of Programs and Gender Equity at Vermont Works for Women. Tech at Work is a program of Vermont Works for Women, and we are a nonprofit organization in Winooski, Vermont, that helps women and girls recognize their potential and explore, pursue, and excel in work that leads to economic independence. Tech at Work is a career exploration speaker series that introduces students to gender diverse role models in their fields of interest. It provides opportunities for them to learn about expanded possibilities and more career options. Vermont Works for Women also offers career exploration events, summer camps, and after school programs for youth. Today at Tech at Work Online, I'm very pleased to welcome Natasha Arnold, an automotive technology expert. So, going to turn it over to Natasha to introduce herself. Hi, Natasha, thank you for being here with us. Yay. Do you want to tell us um, who you are and what, where you work, uh, what you do, maybe how long you've been at it? Yeah, um, my name is Natasha Arnold. I'm 24 and I'm a technician at Heritage. What inspired you to choose a career as an automotive um, tech? And when did you know that that's what you wanted to do for a living? Well, I didn't know it at the time, but in first grade, um, we were told to decide what career, career we wanted when we were older and I chose a mechanic. Um, you know, for, you know, I veered off that path for a while, but cars were always my passion. And, you know, finally, uh, a few years back with Heritage, they were willing to take in somebody that didn't really have professional experience in the field. So I was able to start what I really love to do there. Wow, that's great. So you've known for a really long time. You've had an interest um, in the field for a long time since you were a kid. That's great. So you mentioned that Heritage had a, a, I'm guessing, a training program. Can you tell us more about that and sort of what your, your path was to getting on board there and getting um, into the field and trained in the field? Yeah, so I started at uh, Heritage as a TXM technician, which is basically oil changes and tire rotations, uh, very basic stuff. Um, when you're in TXM, you work in pairs and you follow a you know, a routine with how every vehicle is serviced and you learn and you work your way up. And then eventually after a few years, I was able to get over to the big side of the shop and start doing some bigger jobs and doing some more training and eventually going to school for Toyota. Great, okay. So um, was this something that you did post high school or? What? Nope. Okay. Nope. I had nothing in high school. Uh, for me personally, um, where I went to high school, they didn't offer anything. Unfortunately, we were too small. Okay. Um, and then I was a housekeeper for a while, but I knew I wanted to get out of there. So luckily for me, uh, Heritage was willing to take me in and train me from scratch and give me what I've always wanted to have. That's great. So after you were trained and you mentioned you've been there for about four years and so yep. the, how did that progression look what's your current job title uh right now i am just the technician and i am certified electrical and engine okay. um yeah so my progression i kind of took at my own pace which i was thankful they let me do um it took a little bit longer than what it could potentially take for somebody else just because of where I was at and what I, you know, I really wanted to take my time and, and make sure that I knew what I was doing and understood and didn't push myself too fast. Um, so I stayed in TXM for a couple of years doing various other jobs such as breaks and that really gave me what I needed knowing that I wasn't, you know, being pushed to go too fast. Sure. Um, you know, and then, you know, tire changeovers and little things here and there and, you know, some bigger jobs in between just to kind of, you know, get me uh, comfortable with what I was doing before I jumped into the flat rate position and wasn't no longer hourly. Okay, great, great. 
So can you tell us what is what do you love most about your job? Um, honestly, I love the people. <laughs> uh, I love being hands on. I love, you know, being able to make my own upsells and, and help, you know, the customers and make sure that these vehicles are safe for the road. Great. Do you have a lot of customer interaction? Is that a skill that is needed with your position? Um, there's not a lot, to be honest, uh, but some customers do want to come back and talk to you. But, you know, I'm not a very, um, I'm a very introverted person myself. So you don't need a lot of it, I guess, is, you know, where I'm getting at. Um, yeah. you don't, you know, it's not like being up in the front where you're a service advisor. You sure. know, you're, you're, you're in the back, you know, you're around your um, workmates and that's about it. What are some of the biggest challenges about your work? Um, for me personally, uh, it would be, I'm very small in size. Uh, so sometimes I'm, I have to go ask some, somebody for some help, you know, getting a bolt loose or some of the bigger truck tires are a little bit tougher on me, but mm -hmm. that's for me personally. Sure. So having the skill of being able to, to ask for help when you need it is. Yeah. Yeah. It took it. It, like I said, I'm an introvert, so it took me a while to be able to ask somebody for that help, but yeah. everybody there is so friendly. So. so I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day job, a sort of a typical day on the job, um, what you do every day, and, and then I know we have some photos that we can share of your space, uh, your bay, and your workspace at Heritage. So um, to maybe tell us a little bit about it, and then um, I'll turn on the screen to show your photos. Okay, yeah. Um, so the typical work day for me would be uh, getting to work. We arrive around seven, we gotta be there by 7.30. Uh, you get changed, get your coffee, get your bay ready. Um, then you go into dispatch and they'll give you the first job of the day. And after, you go through each job, depending on what that job is, it will depend on how long you're on it. Uh, you you got to do your MPI for every single vehicle, try to do your upsells, let them know what's wrong with the vehicle, you know, wait a couple minutes for the service advisor to be able to talk to the customer and get back to you. Either then you will do upsells if they want it, or if they don't, you'll, you know, get the vehicle ready to be sent back out. You know, you close your lines out and then the dispatch will automatically give you another job. You just keep doing that throughout the day until um, mm -hmm. you hit five o'clock or whenever it's time to go home. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what NPI is and what the, what upsells are? Yeah, um, MPIs are a multi-point inspection, oh, MPI. which is a sheet that we have to fill out for each vehicle. Uh, for instance, just a couple of examples would be the cabin air filters or you know if the rotors are rusted or brake pads are low or if there's exhaust that's leaking or uh, head gaskets and stuff like that you all put that all on the MPI to let the customer know okay and, yeah and what about the upsells what does that mean so the upsells for instance if you notice that the brakes were getting bad um, you want to go in and you want to recommend so you put in uh, what you're recommending and why you put your story in and then if, if those are considered an upsell so they're not coming in to the shop wanting it okay or they don't think they need it at the time so if they're just coming in for an oil change we're still going to do that full mpi for you and try to upsell you things that your vehicle needs sure okay and so how many vehicles would you say you service in a typical day? Uh, the whole shop or? No, just like you personally. Oh, me? Uh, it's, it, it really depends on what you get yeah, uh, yeah. and what you could upsell. Some bigger jobs will take more time, um, you know, but if, you, if you're just doing oil changes all day, I mean, you could do 10 to 15 cars. Okay. by yourself or it really depends on each vehicle okay well let me show some photographs of your workspace yeah so what we're looking at here would be the entrance for bringing your vehicles into the shop on the back and everybody has their own bay 
uh, which you can see here. Um, and dispatch would be right there on your right. Uh, okay. Some somebody's would be in there uh, to be able to dispatch you any vehicles or if you have any questions. How many total bays are there? Who, uh, I don't know exactly, but there's a, we have like two sides of the shop. Yeah. Um, so, it looks like I can see maybe about five on one side here. So assuming that they yeah, mirror on the other side, there's at least 10, if not more. Yeah, and there's a whole nother half to the other side of the shop. So okay, there, there's, a, there's a, quite a few. Great. All right, next photo. So here we have a couple of uh, tire machines in the uh, tire room. We have to the left the mounter, which is where you take the tires uh, down and put them back on. And straight forward is a balancer, which is where you put the tires on to balance the tire so that they won't shake on the vehicle. Okay, I think this next photo might just be a better picture of the mounder. Yep, uh, that right there, kind of straightforward is the the mounter. So what we'll mounter. do okay. is um, we'll take the tire, we'll break it down, we'll take the rubber off the rim, and we'll put the new rubber back on the rim. Great. Then we have one more. So this is my personal bay. A um, little bit messy right now. <laughs> you can see that we got all the toolboxes that are go straight ahead, and you got the oil buckets. You got the oil guns up top that come down from the ceiling. Thank you for sharing those. Um, I wanted to ask just a, a couple of final questions. One in particular about um, what your experience has been like, or if you've had any particular challenges being in a field that's not traditional for your gender. You know, I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult, uh, you know, being female and, you know, my sexual orientation going into this type of job where you're surrounded by mostly men and whatnot. But to be honest, it's actually been very good for me. I think, you know, everybody's there. Everybody there is so um, acceptive and, you know, they really care about each other. So, you know, they, they don't see a girl, they don't see a guy, you know, you know, they see somebody there who's willing to work and wants to learn. And that's great. Yeah. That sounds uh, like a really supportive workplace. Yeah, it is definitely. I really enjoy it there. Do you have a lot of um, role models there? Are there are there other women there that you can connect with who are also technicians or in the shop? Um, there's there's no other women technician um, at this time, or in the shop. You know, there's some service advisors that I definitely connect with. Um, but yeah, I connect with all the guys out in the shop. Um, there's a guy right next to me. He's a master diagnostic technician, and he is you know, always there for me every step of the way to teach me things and, you know, share his experiences with me. That's great. Great. So looking forward for a young person who's thinking about getting into this field, what, uh, what first of all, what can they expect to earn um, for a starting salary or maybe as they advance for a salary? And then um, finally, if you have any particular advice about getting into the field, um, suggestions of, of different, you know, pathways or training or how to get going. Yeah, uh, so what you should expect to make uh, at Heritage, you know, I'll go by every shop is different. Um, okay. We start our TXM uh, technicians out at $14 an hour, okay. hourly pay. Um, and as you progress and, and get your certifications, you can then go flat rate and your hourly rate will also go up. Um, it's also, you know, when your flat rate's about your drive and your willingness, um, you get paid by the job. Okay. Um, yeah. So you could, you know, depending on your drive, you could expect to make between 40,000 up to a hundred thousand, wow. you know, a wow. year. What would you, what would you say to a young person who wants to get into the field? Do you have any particular advice? Or uh, don't be scared. Okay. You know, uh, if this is something you really want to even just try to do 
go for it. You know, there are places out there that are willing to, you know, take you in and teach you from scratch. You know, you don't have to have, you know, professional experience as long as you're willing to do the work and you want to learn. Great. Well, it sounds like um, you had a positive experience with training on the job and um, advancing where you are and have a supportive work environment. So we really appreciate you being here today with us to share about that. Um, I have one last slide to share with our viewers. So there are some questions you can think about um, as you reflect on Natasha's story and what you learned about uh, what she shared with about her career. And other than that, um, that is it for Tech at Work Online today. Thank you again, Natasha, for being with us. We really appreciate your time and your willingness to share your story with students. Yeah, no problem. Pleasure to do it.